Geography Now t-shirts. Get one, geographynow.com. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. Very few people know anything about Mauritania, AKA the land of wind and ghosts. Strangers from a vibrant background with forbidden actions that linger hidden in the sands lost in time. Whoa, that sounded like the preface of a romance novel. Well, that's one more thing I can add to the list of things to pursue in case of Geography Now crashes and burns. It's time to learn geography now! Ah, uh, you know why I'm smiling. This country usually ranks in the top 10-ish least visited countries in the world. And when I hear that, the gears in my head start spinning and I'm like in my prime research mode. By the end of this episode, you'll want more of more Itania. <laughs> <laughs> Mauritania derives its name from the Berber Kingdom of Mauritania from the 3rd century BC, and since then they developed an interesting civil layout. First of all, the country is located in northwest Africa, bordered by Senegal, Mali, Algeria, and depending on where you stand on the dispute, Western Sahara, which is mostly administered by Morocco, except for this small portion inland by the separatist rebel Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, whom effectively cut off the entire Atlantic coast from Mauritania on the Nouadhibou Peninsula. It's a long story. We talked about it a really long time ago in the Algeria episode. Wow, back in the days when I was doing all the animations and motion graphics. And then you found me, right? No, actually I found Potter, Vincent, and Jared, and they did such great jobs, didn't they, Ken? They did such great jobs. Yes. <laughs> They did such great jobs. Otherwise, the country is divided into 15 regions, or Wilaya. However, the capital and largest city, Nouakchott, which means place of winds, is made up of three in itself, northwest and south. Otherwise, the next largest cities are Nouadhibou and Rosso, located in the south. And the three largest airports are, of course, Nouakchott's Umtunsi International, Nouadhibou International, and Tazadit Airport. On that note, though, Nouakchott is kind of like the starting point of the Trans-West African Coastal Highway, a ridiculously long and partially unpaved road that passes through 12 coastal states of West Africa. Otherwise, one thing Mauritania is famous for is their national railway, owned and operated by the National Mining and Industrial Company. It is a single 704 kilometer line that links the local iron mining center of Zurate with the port of Nouadhibou via Federic and Chum. There used to be a tunnel through Chum, but the SADR separatists weren't too happy and the line was diverted. This line has one of the longest trains in the world with over 200 cars, most of which transport iron ores, but you can also ride it as a passenger. Nouadhibou also has disputably the largest ship graveyard in the world, dropped off by various outsiders that bribed the local officials, and today over 300 of them dot the beaches. Speaking of which, some notable places of interest might include these archaeological sites, the Kifa meteorite crash site, these cool plateau areas, Kumbi Sala, which was once the capital of the Ghana Empire, the medieval town of Ulata, the Manuscript Museum, the holy city of Chingeti, the Habit Library, the Terjit Oasis, and Wadane. Oh, and I forgot to mention that donkey carts are like everywhere. Speaking of wildlife, <laughs> Now, if you don't know anything about Mauritania, it's probably like the most Saharan country you can get. Like literally almost the entire country is covered in sand and sparse oases. First of all, with over a million square kilometers, about 90% of the country is dry desert with generally flat plains considered in both the Maghreb and Sahel regions of Africa. In the center, two small ridges of mountains, the Tagant and Adrar are around. A little further up north, you find the tallest peak, Kediet El Jil. All along the way on the southern border is the longest and only permanent river, the Senegal River, shared along with Senegal. And the largest lake is probably either the Daleg or Lake Urquiz. However, they fluctuate in size due to the droughts and irrigation. So either one could be a winner, as well as this huge reservoir next to Mbut. Back to the Adra Ridge though, the coolest natural landmark probably in all of Mauritania lives hidden right in between the sands, the Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Rishat structure. It's too big to see on land, but from space, this 40 kilometer wide monster has been a curiosity for geologists all over the world. Otherwise, most wildlife is found in the south along the border with Senegal, like the Banque d'Argonne National Park. Bird watching is popular here with sandpipers and flamingos. You can also find wolves and the national animal, the African lion. And once again, Noah is not here to fill in as my co-host for the physical geography section. Uh, I don't know, yeah. You guys remember Nick from the Comoros episode, right? Uh, Nick, how would you like to fill in for this uh, segment? Uh, but I thought you were saving me for the Mauritius episode. Eh, why not give the subscribers a little taste of what's coming up in the next All right. episode. All right, see ya. Mauritania's economy is primarily driven by the mining agricultural sectors, as well as a new petroleum industry offshore in the decently sized Chingeti oil field. One resource though, they are definitely not in short supply though. Wind. Mauritania is located in the heart of Harmattan territory. For those of you who don't know, the Harmattan is a famous dry wind of the Saharan desert that comes between November and March. These winds pick up dust storms easily and can even cause nosebleeds and cracked skin if exposed to one for too long as humidity goes below 15%. Ugh. Stay hydrated and bring some lotion. In the south though, weather is a little better and this is the region where most of the crops are grown and fish are caught. The coasts of Mauritania are actually some of the best fishing spots in the world. Speaking of which, 
food. Some dishes for Mauritania might include things like mishui, spiced fish, mafe, yassa fish and chicken, harira soup, avocado pudding, baobab fruit juice, mint tea, the national tea, and the national dish, chabu gin. All right, food is good, but let's meet the people that eat these dishes now, shall we? All right, thanks, Nick. That was great. Good. Follow him on Instagram if you want. Now, this is pretty tricky because Mauritania's people have a lot of tricky history and there's a lot of ups and downs. First of all, the country has about 4.5 million people and it is the fifth least densely populated country in the world. Out of the people, there are three main people groups. Censuses are not very well documented, but from what studies have shown, it is estimated that the largest group are the Haratin West Africans at about 40%, the Bidan or Moors at about 30%, and the remaining 30% are other African groups of the Niger Congo family groups. They use the Ugias as their current. They use the type C plug outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. The main language is Arabic However, keep in mind they have a distinct Hassaniya dialect similar to the countries around them It's kind of like an 80% Arabic 20% Berber mix Some words are also taken from the Wolof language like Mboro meaning bread in addition French is the most commonly spoken second language They were a former colony. So today si vous parlez vous serez bien ici The vast majority at nearly 100% of the country is Muslim It is the state religion with only a few Christians and Jews mostly in the capital Nouakchott Mauritanian geography Ellie told me that it's often said that Mauritania is like the land of a million poets. It's kind of known throughout the Arab world that Mauritanians like to condense everything they want to say in as few but expressive words as possible. And if you cannot do this and need a lot of explanation, they have a word for you. Zrag or blue, which means something like simple-minded. Now here's where things get a little controversial. I have to mention this and every one of you Mauritanian geography peeps have asked me to bring it to light. If you look at Mauritania in most search engines, you'll probably come across an article or post that talks about the most biggest taboo in the country slavery. They became the last country in the world to abolish slavery in 1981. However, there were no criminal laws enforcing the ban, so under pressure from the outside world in 2007, they passed a law that would prosecute slaveholders. The problem is, however, today's slave ownership is still practiced, even by those in government positions, so it's like a weird under-the-radar type of system that has been perpetuated. It's hard to estimate, but sociologists speculate that anywhere between 4 to 17% of the population may be living in slavery today, and it's mostly the blacks being subjugated by the Arab Community. In some cases, blacks can also be slave owners as well though. Today, however, there are active slavery abolitionist groups like SOS Esclave. These people work to help either escaped or freed slaves get back on their feet and work as functional members of society, providing for themselves. Well, uh, pretty difficult to transition out of that topic. Uh, here's Keith on base. On that note, with Mauritania, you get this kind of fusion Arab, Berber, Black, African type of culture. If you just meet the everyday people of Mauritania, you'll get this very hospitable group that loves to ask questions while offering you mint tea. Most people wear loose, well-ventilated clothing to help with the extreme heat. Men may be wearing the traditional dara or bubu, while women wear the traditional colorful melafa with gazelle skin sandals. Unlike some stricter Islamic countries, it's actually surprisingly acceptable and common for both men and women to party together with traditional dancing and music, usually played with four string lutes called tidinit, women's kora called the ardin, and kettle drums. Oh, and holidays like Eid Fatir and the festival of dates are celebrated here as well. Otherwise, history! We don't have too much time to get into it, but in the quickest way, I can condense it. The Barfur peoples, Berber tribes, Islam arrived, Ghana Empire in the southeast, Almoravid Empire, Portuguese come in, the French colonize, independence in 1960, Western Sahara War, coup d'etat in 1978, this guy takes over, 2005, coup d'etat again, free democratic elections in 2007, but then in 2008, the president was ejected from power from another coup d'etat, they try to move forward, and here we are today. Some famous people from Mauritania or of Mauritanian descent might include people like Dimi Mintaba, Omar Sy, Usmani Dembele, these scientists, these poets, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just pronunciation. However, I was told that some of the most famous people from this country are the Imragan fishers. They have a really unique way of fishing by cooperating with the dolphins, they've made friends and the traditional actually has gone on for centuries. Kind of reminds me of the people of Santa Catarina in Brazil. Did you guys watch that episode, by the way? Go ahead. Hey, I can plug in my own videos on my own channel. It's not selling out. Anyway, friend time. Now, like many other countries we discussed, in Mauritania, it really depends on the ethnicity of the person you're asking to find out whom they consider their best friends. Sudan is like the cool cousin that they get to see once every so often. Historically, they were a major stopover for people on pilgrimage to Mecca. If you ask the Wolof or South Mauritanian people, they would most likely answer Senegal or Mali, as these two countries have had the closest cultural ties, such as people groups and language. The biggest commercial partners and aid providers are the Gulf countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the UAE, France and Spain, and China 
are also in there. These countries have been opening up tons of infrastructure and business deals. And as a former colony, the French have been linked diplomatically for centuries. They make up the largest tourist demographic in Mauritania as well. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Mauritanians would probably say the people of Western Sahara, Southern Morocco, and Southern Algeria, and Northern Mali. They share the same Arab dialect, clothing, culture, tribes. Tons of their students study abroad in these countries. And overall, they get each other the best. In conclusion, Mauritania is like the place where the desert fuses the Arab world with the West African black world amidst the winds and mint tea. No, I don't want to minimize the fact that controversy lingers, but there's a whole picture and story that goes so far with Mauritania. Just take it one page at a time. Stay tuned. Mauritius is coming up next. And I will be in it. Stay yeah. tuned. See Nick.